our in-laws. So at the end of this course, we should know, of course, we in-laws, huh? Looking at how to handle your in-laws and how to prevent in-laws from causing trouble in your marriage. Like I said, it's the third reason why marriage is failed. So we we'll know who in-laws are, how to handle them, and the kind of relationship you should have with them and how to cope with in-law troubles. So who are your in-laws? Your in-laws are your spouse's relatives. Your in-laws are your spouse's relatives. So your in-laws could be your father-in-law, mother-in-law, sister-in-law, brother-in-law. Of course, we have uncle-in-law, aunt-in-law, cousin-in-law, nephew-in-law, niece-in-law. Nowadays, you have friends-in-law. Your spouse's friends. They can cause trouble to your marriage now. So we have friends-in-law, you know. So those are your in-laws. And you cannot overlook your in-laws. Because they are important to your spouse. Because they are related to your spouse. Your in-laws have known your spouse all their life. So you getting married to your spouse, some of them might feel threatened because you are just a newbie. And all of a sudden, this man, this guy, this lady is now so much in love with another person that is a member of this family. So to start with, they are shocked. Secondly, they are a bit jealous. Thirdly, they are a bit envious. They are wondering, who is this person? That is making you go nuts and crazy. Remember, we are still family and family here. So, you need to understand where in-laws are coming from. And because, because of that, they tend to be possessive. Because they feel they've known you all their life. And, and they are now telling them that this person's thoughts, wishes, desires, is taking preeminence over them. So, they feel a bit... Uh, you know, they feel a bit uncomfortable. They want to know who this person is and all that. So... Try to understand them from that perspective and from that angle. When you do, you're going to reduce, you know, your in-law problem, you know, because you understand where they're coming from. Try and wear the shoes, then there won't be any issue. Let me know there won't be any issues, but there are in-laws that are troublesome. Those ones are extreme cases. We also look at how they can be handled so we can have a beautiful, where everyone cohabits and everyone is happy. How do you build a good relationship with your in-law? First, learn to accept them. Learn to forgive them. Number one, learn to accept them. Don't be judgmental. Like I said, wear, like I said, wear their shoes. You understand why they're like that. You know, mothers have been with their sons. They've loved their sons. All of a sudden, another woman has come in. And they don't want another woman to take their place. So, most of them tend to be a bit possessive. Most of them tend to still want to, you know, let their weight be felt and all that. So, learn to accept them. Number two, forgive them. And when I say forgive them, forgive them even before they hurt you or offend you. Have forgiveness in an account, especially for them. Put it in fixed deposit. So, anytime they annoy you or offend you, just forgive them ahead of time. You know, because situations will arise when they will hurt you, they will nag, they will want their, you know, their, their either their son, their daughter, or whoever that is, you know, their own direct relative in that marriage to side them, to stand up for them, you know, ahead of you. So forgive them. Number three, make sacrifices for your in laws, make sacrifices for them, you know, give them the benefit of the doubt. Number four, respect them. Respect them. Utmostly respect them. Respect them. Respect them. Why they're your spouses, especially your father and your mother-in-law. They're your spouses, life source and life givers. Respect them the way you also respect your own father. Very important. Then don't interfere. This is very critical. For this singularly can handle every in-law problem. Don't interfere. What do I mean by that? Okay. A man, his wife, and the man's mother. Is the one causing trouble. I'll give you a clear example. Uh, there's a family. I really use this example most times. There's a family where, you know, the man, I believe, I still remember, is the only, is the only child or the only son, one of, one, of, one, of, one of the two, I can't remember clearly now, that when the woman visits the son's family, she insists that she must sleep with the son in the same room. Yeah. She will insist she will sleep with the son in the same room. And not just that there's a problem, there's a big problem with that. You know, it looks and appears like witchcraft. But anyway, that's not my point. You know, 
In that situation, the woman, that is the son's wife, should not have anything to do with confronting her mother-in-law. It is the son that is supposed to confront his mother. So as the wife, keep out of it. Let the person in that marriage that is related to the one causing the trouble confront the troublemaker. In this case, it is the son. Let's assume the problem is coming from the wife's, the woman's family. The husband should keep his mouth shut. Keep away from the trouble. Don't comment. Don't do anything. Let your wife go and handle her family members. Do you know why? When the dust has settled, fences are mended. If the husband, in the second case, was the one that went and confronted his wife's family members, that is his in-laws, they've settled, they've, the quarrel is over, but they will never forget what that woman, oh, they'll never forget what the man did or said when the trouble was ongoing, when the quarrel was ongoing. But if it is their daughter that went to handle them, when the door settles, they'll be like, ah, after all, it's my daughter. After all, she's my daughter. After all, she's my relative. After all, she's family. They will forgive their own family member faster than they will, than they will forgive you, who is their in-law. So I usually say, don't go confronting your in-law. Let your spouse confront her family or his family in the case of in-law issues or in-law conflicts. Very, very important. Never interfere. Husband, send your wife to go and handle the problem. Wives, ask your husband to go talk to his family on your behalf. And remember, like you know, I've, taught you, uh, I've thought about um, marriage covenant. Remember what I said in marriage covenant? It is the two of you that is most important to each other after God. After the two of you, your children. After your children, we can now entertain in-laws. Don't put your in-laws ahead of your kids. Never, never put your in-laws ahead of your spouse. If you do, it is against the covenant. It is anti-covenant. I'll say that again. Don't put your in-laws ahead of your kids. Don't put your in-laws ahead of your spouse. If you put your in-laws ahead of your spouse, it is anti-covenant. Anti-covenant. So don't do that at all. When you obey this principle, then the spouse handling her family or handling his family in the case of in-laws ensures that your spouse will be protected. The first example I gave you, if the son handles his mother, say, mom, I cannot, you cannot sleep with me in the same room. I am married now. This is my matrimonial bed. This is my matrim- the room I share with my wife. Go and sleep in the mother. Go and sleep in the visitor's room. The mom might shout, scream, yelp, and do all those things. At the end of the day, she cannot be annoyed long enough with her son. But imagine if it's the daughter that said, Mama, you will not sleep with my with my wife, husband. It can never happen. And the woman will chat, eh? You saying that to me? Yeah. You see, now problem is starting. Even if the husband comes, settles them, she will never forget what that woman said. And she will hold it against her daughter-in-law. So let in in-law problems confront your family members yourself. Don't send your spouse to handle your family. You handle your family. Your spouse handle his family or her family. Don't go and handle your spouse's family. If you do, you're going to cause a lot of trouble. So don't interfere. The sixth one, don't take sides with your in-law. Or rather, let me put it this way. Don't take sides with your spouse in the presence of your in-laws. Let's assume the man traveled to the village. The mom was sick. He now brought the mom back. And the mom to the, to the, to the city. And the mom insisted that she would stay with him in his room. Right. And the woman said, no, you can't stay with me in my room. They're going to stay in the visitor's room. And they were arguing. And the wife now walks in. Maybe she went to the market. And asked her, what is going on? The husband now says, ah, mama said she wants to stay with me in the room. I told her no, that she must sleep in the visitor's room. See what the wife should do. The wife will say, ah, yeah, mama is not feeling well now. Let her sleep with, his, with you now. She, she just wants to so lay someone that will, you know, pamper her. Let her sleep with you. See what's going on. This woman now, of course, does not want 
her mother-in-law to sleep in the same room with his, with her husband. She doesn't want that for her mother-in-law to sleep in the same room with her, with her husband. But for the sake of peace, she's, she appears to side her mother-in-law in front of her husband. Now, if the husband is wise, the husband will she not, will she not say, eh, so mama can sleep with me. Okay, no problem now. No. He should put his feet down and say, no. Ah, for what now? Why will mama sleep with me? Is now our room. What is she doing there? She should go and sleep in the, in the visitor's room. And the wife said, ah, no, now. Nah. Let mama sleep with you. There's no problem. Me, I can sleep with the children. Let me go and sleep in the children's room. What is going on there? In the presence of her in-law, her mother-in-law, she appears to side with her. Well, we know what is going on. She never, never, never will tolerate that woman sleeping in her bedroom with her husband. But she, does, she doesn't appear to side with her husband in the presence of her mother-in-law. Do you know what I would do to the mother-in-law? The mother-in-law will be like, ah, this is my daughter-in-law. is just a sweet girl. She's just a sweet woman. Ha, ah, she's siding me. What is going to happen in that relationship is that the woman will start becoming endeared to her daughter-in-law that way the in-law issue will totally be removed so in the presence of your spouse side with your in-law that will make them feel that you are for them so side with your in-law in their presence but of course when they told you go back to your room be like imagine how can mama come and say she's sleeping with you the man will say yeah imagine you know, you know that is that so the woman leaves the impression that her daughter-in-law is for her. And that, you know, whenever there's any issues, we want what will happen that if what's gonna happen next is that if there's anything the woman wants from the son, she will go through, she will go through the daughter-in-law. This also helps to strengthen in-law relationships, especially when the son-in-law makes it clear that his wife should not be trifled with. Let your parents know. Your sisters know, your brother know that nobody interferes with your family affairs. Nobody has the right to talk to your wife anyhow. Husbands, you make that clear to your family. That will also let them know that you have left and you are cleaving to your wife as the Bible said, as God instructed. So you you do it, you do it, you do it with skill. You drop some, you know, some 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 words here and there, points of notes here and there, you know, in your conversation. So they will know that ah, when it comes to your wife, oh, everybody should just be careful. You know, I uh, I had this couple, I uh, cancelled. The woman had just had a problem. What well, was the problem? Like ah, that uh, when members of the husband's family come, they when they enter uh, their matrimonial bedroom without even any fear or reverence, they just open it, enter go in, get anything they want, do anything they want and come out. I mean, she, she found it so annoying. They'll go into her kitchen, open her pots and all that. That's her, the, the, the husband's sisters and brother. And she has brought this to the attention of the husband. I'm like, please, stop your brothers and your sisters now. They should know, yes, one of, I think one of them is to live in their house. I'm like, yes, they live in this house, but they should know that they should not come into this room without knocking or anything. They should knock before they come in. They should not go to my, my support. And help themselves without talking to me first. You know, let them know that in this house that I am the one in control. And they might get on making excuses for you know, leave them now. This is how we grew up now. <laughs> they, and, and she was like, no, 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 that she needs some kind of privacy. And she brought it up. And I told the man that the wife is correct. This is a new family unit. It is not a continuation of your family at home. This is a new, new family unit which you are the head. And your family members, as your family, as your brothers and sisters, what I mean, don't take preeminence over your wife. So I, I now told him, do what your wife says. You need to put a stop to them. You call them and caution them. Say, they should not enter your room without knocking. They should not enter your room if you are not there or your wife is not there. They need to go there and get something. They need to take permission. They should not even enter the kitchen for anything apart from drinking water or doing some, some chores. They should not touch your wife's support or whatever. Anything they want, they should ask for permission. Make it clear. Let it be a standing room. If not, they will disrespect that woman. And if they disrespect the woman, they are disrespecting you. Let them know she's not supposed to trifle with. And vice versa. 
Wives, also caution your family members when it comes to your husband and your own home. If you respect him, cover him, and you protect him. Of course, don't fight your in-laws. Never do that, no matter how provoked you are. Take care of your in-laws. The way parents, children are supposed to, the way children are supposed to take care of their parents, take care of your in-laws because they're also your parents, right? Your parents-in-law. Take care of them. And like I said, they come after your children. They are number four or three, depending in the pecking order. You know, take care of your in-laws from time to time. Buy gifts from for, for them. Generally, doing festive period, Christmas, give them Christmas gifts, birthday gifts, and all those things. Take care of your in-laws. Very important. Then, um, how do you handle? How do you handle your in-laws? Crafty ones, especially. I've mentioned one when I said um, you handle your relatives. Don't let your your spouse handle your own direct relatives. You personally handle your relatives. Number two, talk to God. In fact, that should be number one. Number one, talk to God. Number two, you handle your own relatives yourself. Number three, talk to your spouse. You know, talk to your spouse. Because if you don't communicate with your spouse, and if you're not in agreement, they're going to, you're going to have a lot of issues regarding that aspect. So talk to your spouse. You know, talk to God. You handle your relatives yourself. Talk to your spouse for him or she to calm down. And then I also understand or him understand where this particular in-law is coming from because you already know that person, you know the person's behavior and all that. Number four, talk to your in-law. But I always say this, talk to your in-laws only when they have a problem with their own relative. Talk to your parents' in-law if they have a problem with their child. Don't talk to your in-law if you are the one that they have a problem with. No. Except you're going to talk to them to beg or apologize. Yeah, but if it is, hey, see my own pa- point, see my own side, see why I did this. No, don't do that. Let your spouse talk to their, his or her own family. Keep away from it. But when your in-law has problems with their own family member, let's say your in-law has a problem with your wife, that is your mother-in-law might not be in good terms with her daughter, who is your wife. Yes, in that case, you can broker peace. And in that case, you can broker peace only on that case. If they have a problem with you, stay out of it, except they're going to apologize and all that. Don't take sides. The next one, don't take sides with your in-law ahead of your spouse. You know, let them know you stand with your spouse because you guys are in a covenant relationship. Your relationship is a ride and die relationship. You know, because if you do, you destroy your marriage, the kids will suffer, the couple will suffer. You know, you destroy yourself and even judge yourself. That's exactly what happened to Samson's wife. When she took sides against Samson in Judges chapter 15 and all that, talks about that. Then you also destroy the relationship between the two families. Don't do that. Then if your in-laws don't like, don't like, rather, if your family member don't like your spouse, you don't like your spouse for one reason or the other, constantly project his good parts towards them, hard good parts to them. Let them start seeing your spouse's good, good parts. You know, talk good of them. And all that. Let me give an example. Let's say your mother-in-law does not like your wife. Fine. Christmas. Buy her things she likes. When you're taking it to your that's your sorry, your mother does not like your wife. You know, when you are buying things for, for, for your mother for Christmas, give it to your wife to go and give to her as if she's the one that bought it. Or if she refuses to do that, you can give it to your mother and say, see what your wife bought though. She has been saving money and all that to buy this. You know, just project your spouse's good parts to your people in case they don't like your spouse. Constantly do that. Then always cover your spouse. Never support them. Never support them against your spouse. That is anti covenant So you solve in-law problems by praying to God about it. You get people in that family to like you. There must be one or two people in that family that are on your side. Get them to like you. Use them as intermediary, you know. To reach the the factioning the factions in that family, win their hearts with gifts. That's gifts. Make a way for him. Find gifts for them. Win their hearts. Then believe God for favor that they will find favor. That you will find favor in their eyes. You know, believe God for favor. Then ask God for wisdom on how to relate with them. You know, number six. Number six. Whenever issues arise, make sure your spouse is on your side. Make sure you've got your spouse on your side. Very, very key. Then protect your family. Number seven. 
Don't let your kids get affected by any in-law issues that is going on. Constantly pray for them to, to prosper. Because anybody you pray for, you finally be at peace with that person. The next one, number nine. The woman must agree, support, and submit to her husband in all things. This is when all has failed. The woman stand with your husband in all things. Even if it's against your family where you're coming from, stand with your husband. That is what covenant does. Protect him. When I mean protection, I don't mean divine protection <laughs> or physical protection. What I mean is that anytime they want to talk about against your husband, your family member will talk against your husband, stand for him. For the, for the husband. Anytime your family members won't talk against your wife, don't take it. Don't stay there with them and be laughing. Hey, 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 hey. No, don't do that. Reprimind them and stand for and with your wife. Very important. You know? They never repay evil for, for evil. That has never solved any problem. Seek to repay good. Seek to repay them with good for every evil they've done against you. Then the eleventh one, separate them when you have walked in love and there are still problems. Sorry, separate from them when you have walked in love and there are still problems. When Haggai and Sarah still had problems, what did God tell Abraham to do? God told Abraham, kick that woman out. And Abraham did exactly what God did, what God asked for. So separate from them. You've tried everything, you know you've gone beyond and above, you've done everything by the book, and yet. So separate for them. You don't owe you don't owe them friendship, but you owe them love. You know? Love also gets to a point where you might need to separate. So how do in-laws interfere? How do in-laws interfere? In-laws can interfere in various ways. It could be direct interference. Under direct interference, they could be confrontational. They can give unsolicited advice to you. Like I said before, they can barge in into your matrimonial room, bedroom, thinking that it's their right. This is my, my brother's house. Why can't I enter any room? They can also suggest to their brother or their sister what to do in that family. They can also give you advice on how to run your home. Ah, do this in your house. Don't do the other one in your house. Mommy will call the son. Ah, is that the way your wife does? I better go do it like, do it like that. It's not your business. They can also do that by giving us some advice and trying to run your home. Then indirectly, these ones, they are very, very subtle. They have ways. They can just, you know, insinuate one thing, say one thing by the side, side comment here and there. And those things are causing trouble in their home. You know? The other, other indirect way they can also cause trouble is by sending a house help to your house. Meanwhile, that house help is the CIA agent, you know, getting information and remit, remit, remitting it back to home base. You know, these are some of the ways they can cause trouble indirectly. And why did they do all this? Like I said from the beginning, they don't know. They feel threatened with this new relationship, with this new member of the family. Ah, will this new wife stop their brother from giving them money the way you used to? You know, those kind of things cause them to cause trouble in that home. So, they lack understanding. Another reason is that, you know, failure to accept that shift in management. When daddy and mommy now knows that, ah, this man now has somebody that will be calling the shots at home in the, in the name of the wife, they feel threatened too. <laughs> God bless you. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and look at the other, other masterclasses on relationship that I have. And very soon I'm going to have masterclass on um, success coming soon. So you make sure you hit me up, subscribe to my channel so you get a notification whenever a new class is uploaded. God bless you.